Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab special. Uh, we've got David here from Universal Audio, who is the uh, the current axe meister, shall we say, for the yes. Universal Audio range of products. And uh, you may have heard about the Ox, which has been kind of, there's been information out, but not fully, we don't know all there is to know about it. So yeah. perhaps you could explain a little bit about what Ox does and what it can do. Um, Ox is the amp top box that basically allows you to get everything you can out of your, your tube amplifier. So it, it gets sort of inserted in the signal chain, um, the speaker outs from your amp go into this, and then the so speaker... So it, it basically eats speaker power yes. so you can keep the level down. Yes, right? and, the spe and then, and then um, speaker plugs into that, and it's a reactive load box. So basically, um, in the analog world, what it's doing is allowing you to turn down the amplifier to a much more usable level. Right, okay, but you can still drive the amp hard. Yes. You're just getting, I guess, attenuation. It's more complicated than that, of the volume that comes out of the speaker. Yeah, right? so the, the, the key point being that it's a reactive load box. So what that means is you can load down an amplifier just with like a power soak, like just just, just attenuating it down, but the, the actual amp wants to see a load that reacts like a speaker. A right, speaker so is the, moving. The coil it's, is moving. It's and, changing yeah. impedance constantly. So I actually look a little bit like um, with um, with our audio interfaces, um, we do unison, right? So it's a similar Which is sort of loading the microphone the way it wants to, to be loaded by the mic pre. This is very similar in that it's in, in the analog world and it's just recreating what a speaker is doing and then makes the amplifier actually feel right. Ah, okay, so you effect so effectively we can crank it, but not annoy the neighbors. Yes. <laughs> so, and if you want to try yeah, that okay, real quick, so I mean, so we've got a, a 65 Deluxe reissue, which is a loud amp. Um, and if this is off and we've got this on like seven, then it's... Whoa! Right? Too loud for here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and too loud for most people's houses as well, right? So here I can bring it down to two, this, um, and so well, we're still getting the same. I mean, it's harder to hear because it's it, it's quieter, but I'm still sensing the same kind of that bass suck that you get when you kind of palm mute. And yeah, and it. that's where sort of the analog side of what Universal Audio does sort of comes into play because we've obviously got years of. Of, of experience. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize gear. that, you know, how long Universal Audio have been making studio grade kind of mic preamps and what have you, right? Yeah, yeah. so that, that sort of background of building 1176s and, and, and the LA2As and all the mic pre's and all of that, you know, this is just a no compromise reactive load box. And what you're, I think you, you mentioned, the tone is still the same. You know, if you don't have that reactive load, things get real splatty and compressed and just feel weird. This still cleans up. Oh, so you're still getting the same front end loading as well, right? Which as a guitarist, it's so much about feel. Right. And there's a lot of things that go into this that really just sort of retain that feel. But it's not just that. I mean, obviously we've got an app here. No, which, that's just, which is just part of it. Else, right? Yeah, so without the app, you're able to just turn down your amp, take it to a gig, record with it, play it in your man cave, and not disturb the neighbors, right? But then if you actually turn it off completely, so I'm not getting anything out of the amplifier anymore, right. now um, what I'm getting is basically modeling everything that comes after the amp. Okay. So I've got um, speaker models, microphone models, and then room models. So we've got some of that coming out of the speaker. Right so if now, you just yeah. Play. So right, that's it. So that's still making the amp work hard to get the sound, and then what's happening after? Right. Okay. Yep, and I can make it. I mean, I can peg this too, and just. And what I've got right now is our cabinet model of the same cabinet. So right here I've got a black deluxe one by 12 cabinet. Right. And you can see here I've got, I can choose between, I have um, choose between six different microphones. If I bring that up. Oh, so you've got three mic, you can mic it three times as well, right? Basically, so yeah. So I've got the speaker model, which we're calling dynamic modeling because it's, it's not just an impulse response. It really is, again, 
this sort of model that changes how hard you hit it, right. even different notes. So it actually recreates um, uh, with this speaker drive control, like how old the speaker is. <laughs> so it'll start to sort of the cone will compress and then you get what's called cone cry, where when you hit certain notes, you'll get these sort of undertones and these different harmonics, um, which uh, uh, impulse responses just can't even do. Right. So once I go into here and start using the, the digital side of this, I've got two different microphones that I can control the volume and the panning of. Um, those mics, I have six choices. Right. Right. And I can actually make them go off axis if I want. Um, you can see a little better on this model of a 121. Um, and then I have the room. And again, like I mentioned, with the reactive load, it makes the amp feel right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you play you know, guitar amp models, if you don't have a good room sound, it again feels like stiff. It feels hard to play. And one of the neat things about this is I, there it's just completely dry. If I start bringing this room mic up, it take off. Now all of a sudden it's sort of bouncy. Yeah, it's not like you haven't gone for a full. There's a room, but I can hear what you mean. There's yeah, a, no, it's, it's the early. It's the early reflections. It's very similar to um, to our plug-in Ocean Way, right. and it's actually based on our studio at Universal Audio. So is that? that I mean. Obviously, there's no wires connecting this. There's some kind of Wi-Fi access between the two. Yes, this uh, the iPad's actually just seeing that as a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then it just open opens right. up the so app. This, so this is just the interface to what's happening yep. inside here in the in the electronics. Yeah, okay. and you can use an iPad. You can use a, um, a computer as well. Right. Okay. So what level of kind of what? How can we show? I mean, is there? A, can you do something radical to the sound? Yeah. So one of the cool other cool things is anything I'm doing here can be saved to this rig knob. Uh, okay. So when I switch this rig knob, I've got six different presets, and you're choosing between any of the 17 different cabinets, any combination of the two mics, the room mic, um, and then also a lot of the post effects that we haven't even talked about yet. Right. But so right now, in the one position, basically I have that same, the same speaker that's in here. On two, I have it set to like a, a uh, uh, 57 Deluxe kind of thing with a Jensen with a little bit of, um, with some effects. So if you see here in the master section, we've got EQ, we've got an 1176, so I can add compression, we've got delay, and then we've got plate reverb. So right here, I've got some compression and some plate reverb, and very different. But at the core of the sound is the amp doing Yeah, and I can still lovely. turn this down and EQ it however I want it or crank it up. It sounds great in the room. I yeah, it's still yeah. completely re re responsive to my touch, which again is a lot of that reactive load coming into play. You Does that only come out of the stereo out, or is that actually, could you could that come out of the actual speaker no, as well? No, that's it only coming out of the stereo out. So um, just to be clear, we've got a stereo line coming out of here that's going into our recording, so we're listening back into the room to that stereo line out. Okay, yep. we're not listening to the speaker at all. No, okay. not at all right now. But you could run this alongside and mic it up. But I guess for front of house, you could have, you know, my onstage monitor sound, crank that up, and then this goes to front of house. Yeah. And you get... Yeah, and, and part of the beauty of this rig knob is you don't need any of this. You can just save your presets to the rig knob, go to the gig, bring it up, and know what you're sending to front of house. Right. So for the guitarist, it's it, it keeps it a little bit lower tech if you don't want to deal with this kind of stuff, right? And also, I suppose the thing about this is, is it's got uh, um, the ability to run this DSP, is it, is it the same sort of technology that's happening in your uh, Apollo stuff, in your, you know, it's essentially Shark DSP type of kind of things going on? It's, I mean, it's the same kind of thing, yes, right. it, but, it, but it's completely self-contained, right? So you don't, um, the outputs on the back of this, you've got line outputs, you've got a digital out, and then you basically, and, and you have a USB for future updates but it's, it's, it's completely self-contained. So we've none got, of the processing is happening. We've got right another here. unit here. Maybe we can have a look yeah. at the connections on the, uh, on the Yeah, so the right unit. here, and it's actually convenient because we've, we've actually uh, printed 
the, all, the label upside, upside, down. upside down as well. <laughs> so when you're at the gig and you're leaning over, you can actually actually read it all. But yeah, we've got digital out. We've got stereo outs here. Um, we have a foot switch jack for future updates and then the speaker ins and outs. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that you can switch the impedance too. So you so four, on eight, your... 16. And how, I mean, how much, because obviously this is quite a little amp. Yep. How much power can this take? So, you know, if I've got a really massive stack, what could this take? It, at... It'll take up to 150 watts. Right, okay. Yeah. And you could use it for, I guess, a base rig as well, if you were. You could, absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Marshall Super Lead, you know, yes, no problem. Because, I mean, in some places also, I mean, I've seen um, kind of almost people build these little rigs where you've got cabinet cabinet cabs where you lock your guitar away in tiny, inside uh -huh. this tiny box. Yep. I mean, that would mean you wouldn't need to do something like this, right? No, absolutely, you wouldn't need to. And um, it's, uh, again, part of the beauty of that is you, you have that, that cabinet locked away like that, right? But that's just one speaker, one type of cabinet, right. one, you know. With this, I can just very quickly, again, audition different sounds. Yeah, was, um, so, we didn't, what's the room do? The room controls this same, so you, you can see the knob out, okay. going right there. Right, so right so. here is a, a, a model of like a, a single eight combo, and you can hear it. And this one real, sounds real cool if you start cranking the room. So crank that up and you gotta. Nice. Flip from there, model of like an AC30 type of thing, so I can. Just huge change in tone though, right. even feel, you get that more boxy. Um, and then. Of course, yeah, a, a four-by-twelve cabin, exactly. So again, this is a little deluxe going into this, but still. And can you can you go? Could you? I mean, in, like in some things, it's like those kind of plugins where you can make the piano twenty-five feet long. I mean, can you kind of go? Actually, I want. Eight four by twelves. How far? How can you go to the extremes, or is it mostly kind of contained within the sort of this, normal rig stuff? This is contained. I mean, so so really, you're running one four by twelve and one speaker right. that's that's got two different mics on it. But as I mentioned, you've got six different speaker options. I mean, sorry, microphone options here, and you've got seventeen different cabinets. So one thing you can do is instead of um, recording both microphones, you could choose to, to have one of the outputs be a DI. Right. And then you could come back and reamp re it through there. You can use your own impulse responses. You can do whatever you want with that as well. So you're not tied to this, you know? So there's a number of different uses, right? You can plug it in and use it just to turn down your amp. You can plug it in and have it replace your cabinet completely and use all the models in here and get a fully, you know, a fully produced guitar sound. Or you can kind of go in between. You could mic up your amp, keep it on. I mean, you, one of the nice things about this is some of the other the load boxes on the market, it just kills the speaker. This, you can still have the speaker going, mic it up, record that, then record um, the, the fully produced sound that's coming out of this, or right. you can choose to use the DI And you've got well. a separate control over the line out yep. level and also a separate headphone, right? Yeah. Um, and the you mentioned, you know, we've got this, and, and you don't even need to use this really yep. in those situations. You can choose between the different six rigs. You can even play with your room sound there if you've got headphones on or something, you want to use a little more room. Um, and then, yeah, you've got a separate line out as well to send to the house or to the studio. Nice. So when and how much? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, right now it's, it's scheduled to come out in winter. That's about as specific as we're going to get. This um, year, presumably. Yeah, yeah. this year. <laughs> yes, winter this year. And um, the uh, U.S. map is going to be 1299 Right. Okay. So, I mean, it's sort of geared to people who want to use their class account, but, you know, can't in some situations. Or for recording, I can see this being very useful as well. Yeah, I mean, it's really just to get the most out of your tube amp 
in a lot of different scenarios, whether it's just for somebody who wants to be able to turn it down and play it loud in their man cave, or, or, else, or is gonna be recording or, 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 or playing live. It really sort of covers all the bases, I think. Great. Thank you very much, David. Thank you very much. Having you. That was uh, the Universal Audio Ox. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, David, for coming around. See you next time.